Hello, Shocker Nation, and welcome to the Forward Together podcast. I'm Wichita State University President Rick Muehmer. My guest today is Leanne Corrette, who is serving as WSU's 2023 Sam Bloomfield Distinguished Engineer in Residence for the College of Engineering. Leanne is the former president and CEO of Boeing Defense Space and Security. She has more than 30 years of aerospace industry experience and she's been featured on Fortune Magazine's Most Powerful Women list. And perhaps most impressive, she's an alumna of the Wichita State W. Frank Barton School of Business. Leanne, so good to see you. Thank you for agreeing to be on the podcast. It is great to see you again. Yeah, we go back a little ways. We're like Uh, best friends. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) so you're here today on campus. Tell us, first of all, let's back up. Tell us what's your connection to Wichita State and to a little bit about where you ended up in your career. Well, I'll start first off by thanking you per- professionally as President Muma. Mm. It is wonderful to be here with you. Now, Rick, just for fun. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it's been really great. So, you know, I got my undergrad at Kansas State mm-hmm. and I got my master's degree here at Wichita State. And I have said repeatedly to folks around the world. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've got state school degrees and I did okay. Yeah, and, you did really. Uh, yeah, I did okay. <laughs> and I have gone even to Harvard's Program for Leadership Development, mm-hmm. which is like a mini MBA. Mm-hmm. And thank goodness I actually had been through the Wichita State program because mm-hmm. I would never have uh, passed mm-hmm. the coursework because it is such a great uh, program mm-hmm. here. The business school is, you know, is current mm-hmm. it is um brings forward all the tough challenges mm-hmm. and the right conversations happen mm-hmm. um and so you know it's all about where you've come from and paying it forward and so it, i just have a connection to the shockers and i love everything this campus does and i love the direction that you and your team are taking the university it's a privilege to be here yeah and so you're a kansas born and bred no, I am okay. a Space Coast baby. My mm-hmm. mom and dad both worked at the Boeing Company and met on the Saturn V program outside uh, New Orleans. And then we ended up, I was born in Florida on the Space Coast during mm-hmm. the Apollo programs. And then we moved all over because the Boeing Company uh, is very much like military at the time where you, you know, as programs come and go, you move. And there's like families of us that all travel together and we settled here in Wichita. So I ended up going to junior high and high school here, met my husband in high school. I went uh, to school. He went to Wichita State. Mm-hmm. Um, then I came back, got my master's, and I started my career here in the area. Yeah, and you were work, you worked for Boeing, right? I yeah. worked for Boeing for over 34 years. Yeah. Yeah, pretty so, fabulous. So tell us a little bit about how all that happened, because you ended up being a, I, I probably don't have the title right, Senior Vice President or Executive Vice President at Boeing Defense, correct? Um, I was the, C, I, my career, uh, my last uh, operating role was a CEO and President of Boeing Defense Space and Security, okay. and I was an Executive Vice President uh, to the company on, you know, the company's leadership team, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff, and never had a career plan. Mm-hmm. And if you actually looked at my career, there are probably plenty of people at times that just kind of pondered a little bit mm-hmm. in terms of how I got there. And really, it mostly was because I didn't have a career plan. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't about getting to a certain position. It was about taking the hard assignments. It was about having great teams to work with. It was about building great teams. It's about taking care of the customers. Mm-hmm. But when you work for uh, the nation's military, And you see that these men and women are on the front line putting their lives to make sure that we can have conversations like this. There's just no greater gift. And so that's that was a huge motivation. Well, and I like the fact that um, you're not an engineer, but you're um, as went all the way to the top. Uh, of a major engineering company and, you know, an aerospace company and and a woman from Kansas in, in that role. It's, it's, it's just awesome. Well, the I, what I love to talk about is you have to surround yourself with people who are smarter than you mm-hmm. and you need diverse perspectives. And while I didn't have a degree in engineering, I did a couple of years and then I decided I didn't want to be an engineer. I put the smartest people at the table next to me Mm -hmm. and brought in outside perspectives and they knew I trusted them. Mm -hmm. I let them do their jobs. I'd Mm -hmm. ask a lot of questions. Don't Mm -hmm. get me wrong. I asked lots of questions, but uh, at the end of the day, we're running businesses. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be able to transcend 
all those different elements, whether mm -hmm. it's the supply chain, whether it's the finance mm -hmm. uh, modeling, whether it's the engineering side. But you have to make certain that you trust your team and let them really do what they're paid to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good lesson for, you know, we have students listening to this. We have faculty, staff, community members, and people ask me that too. So, you know, how do you keep track of all this? And so I have some very smart people who are on the executive team here at That's the right. university, and they're empowered to do their job. And I, it, I, you know, I don't. I'm not sitting around, you know, worrying whether someone's, you know, sweeping the floors or whatever. You know, so I think people think that in, in these big organizations. So it's good to hear. That. Well, and your background's very unique for your position because, as I promised you, this is not going to be a land. Right. This was yeah, going to be a conversation. <laughs> I mean, when you think about where you started and. You know, and healthcare, uh, and, healthcare, and, and physicians, mm -hmm. uh, um, PA, physician assistant, assistant program yeah. down in Houston. Yeah. Did you ever think early never. in your career you would end up a in Kansas, two at Wichita State, and president of the university? No, never. Uh, it's the same thing. Um, you know, I, it, it's for me. It's always been a door's open. I go through it and see what the opportunity yeah. is. And, uh, and and I don't know about you. I'm one of those people who believe that. It's take the job that makes you want to throw up at night. <laughs> yeah. You know, don't okay. take, I you know I what I mean? Okay, that. but you know, not the one that is super easy that anybody, right, you know, that yeah. you, you totally have confidence you can mm. go do. Take the one that's going to cause you stress mm -hmm. because that's the one you're going to learn the most from. Yeah, and it's going to challenge you. It is going yeah. to challenge you, yeah. and that's where we learn our most. All right, so you have... I just want to know, I'm very impressed since you did your homework as we were walking in together and you're reading your little <laughs> note cards. You're looking really yeah. good. Well, I, I have to have some cheat sheets <laughs> because as you know, there's a lot of things going on at the university and I can't keep them all in my head. But I, I do want the listeners to know that you're our Sam Bloomfield Distinguished Engineer in Residence, but you're not an engineer. Which is actually very ironic in yeah. of itself. So yeah. tell me, what do you think about all that? Well, when, um, you know, when we had the conversation about it, my first reaction was, but I'm not an engineer. Mm -hmm. And then the conversation became, engineers have to be able to operate in the business world. Mm -hmm. You can design the best products, but if you can't build it, mm -hmm. if you can't buy the parts that are needed, if you can't assemble it, market it, mm -hmm. market it if you can't make money off of it, then all yeah. of that brilliance is lost. Mm -hmm. And it really is about the outcomes, and it's about working together. And there's lots of really smart people, and it's having respect for all of those disciplines. Mm -hmm. And so the conversations that Anthony and I have been having, and you know, even this afternoon, it's more about leadership, and it's about making certain that you're open to other people's perspectives and ideas. I actually have said over time on some of um, our design reviews, you know, I actually may have asked some questions that actually caused our designs to get better. Yeah, because I right. came at it from a completely different mm -hmm. angle. I remember walking through a factory one day, and we were working up a uh, power panel for an aircraft. And in order to, for a maintainer to replace or fix it, they were supposed to put their hand through the back of the panel. The hand that could fit through this panel was like itty bitty. Like my hand wouldn't even fit through mm -hmm. this panel. Mm -hmm. And so we're all sitting there and you think, how are you going to fix it? How are you gonna ever fix it? Mm -hmm. And how are you going to have somebody who's, let's say, out on a flight line, maybe in another part of the world, somewhere maybe it's not safe, mm -hmm. there's, you know, threat conditions, and we're asking them to go do that. And so this is a little bit more about having an idea of what the outcome is yeah. and making sure that we're working together to mm -hmm. achieve it. And there's a lot of aesthetics things, too, that people don't think of, even on airplanes. Totally. Right? Like, oh, my gosh. My feet can't go there, or, or where right. am I going to put my drink? Or... And tied to safety, mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, there is a reason why, you know, we have all the safety features yeah. uh, for certain. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, All right. I have a question for you. Okay. Okay, so I know when we do these podcasts, <laughs> he's, I know you're going to die that I'm actually doing this. You really did it. And these are always stuck on the wall for the viewers. These are always stuck on the wall, but they're really minuscule back there, in like in a little frame. Mm -hmm. And you have like a floating head. <laughs> and you go do different things. So we're going to have a contest. So I like a team. Just so, so you know that these weren't my ideas. This is the team. Here. Well, I think the team's ones. fabulous. And I particularly <laughs> love the fall jacket. So this is you preparing kitchen. I'm preparing preparing Thanksgiving in Thanksgiving your kitchen, dinner. I believe. Yes. So that's the current <laughs> that's thing. The, yeah. But I think that there's some others that really are quite interesting, and I think we should have a poll. So I hope when this is done, you all will have a poll of which one do they like best. You as a uh, wooshock. Yeah, as a, you that's know, my favorite one, actually. I, because, I do, because I do like well, Because that I one. think people actually well, would believe this. Little, your head is not quite as gray. I think, I think people would actually believe that I would totally. do that. <laughs> 
Have you done this? No, I haven't. Why haven't you That's done this? A, well. Okay, oh my gosh. So you know, okay, so <laughs> let's be honest. So, I, okay, okay, before I tell that story, I, I challenge you, I double dog dare you. <laughs> to do that. To do this at a basketball game. Yeah, I, I don't double know. dog dare you to do this at a men's basketball. I'll game. have to uh, check with my handlers. You know, they're they're they're, they're 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 always are, assessing are risk. The handlers, <laughs> the handlers said yes. I said okay. Now the next one comes from. So this is so the, you know. So here's our competition. So you know. So the the Wu Shock playing Wu. Okay. Then this is from. Um, okay, I know the movie. It's it's like the Edward Scissorhand guy. Yes. The, 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 yeah, the, the, uh, twice the night before. Rickness. Rickness. Okay. <laughs> so. Now that may cause some children to have nightmares. Yeah, I don't right. know. I'm not sure that's my favorite, but right. you know, in the theme it's of creative. Halloween, it is creative. <laughs> and then there's the infamous Ted Lasso. Mm. So I don't know. How did you not get a spot on the show <laughs> yeah. as the Wichita State University president going to? A game. You would think that that would be. Something I can't believe. Or did you not write them a letter well, to say? Well, yeah, we didn't. But you didn't write a letter to. Well, him? but when that was when they proposed the pilot, they didn't. You know, they didn't know if it was going to be successful or anything like that. And so we and we didn't. We thought, what? This is about some football coach from Wichita State going to go coach soccer in the UK. <laughs> what? That's not going to be interesting. Is it not one of the best yeah. shows of all time? Well, you know what I like about it is it's it's. Shows those Kansas values, you know, Ted Lasso, the main character. He, you know, Jason Sudeikis is from, from Kansas. He went to Fort Scott Community College. I did not know that. And uh, I think his family's, and he lived up in northeast Kansas. Um, and so he brings all that, all those Kansas he, nice niceties that the, you all which, I, which, by the way, the niceties, as with him, are some of our best uh, career enablers because people underestimate folks who are nice yeah. or kind mm -hmm. and yeah. you know there's a lot of power in that but so you really never sent them a letter to no say, we're trying to get him to come speak at one of our commencement well, if he comes and speaks i just I can, you'll come can back I just right come back? yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah totally yeah. so we'll see if that ever <laughs> okay, happens so if we were to vote for most realistic i vote you as wushok <laughs> yeah and as um most like um like opportunity to, you know, take like it to the next take level. Take it to the, as, as you as Ted Lasso. Yeah. Okay. But we're gonna have your your you know the 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 poll the show, we'll, we'll shocker see. team. We'll team get the, well, the team figure out how yeah. to. But I them. double dog dared you, and you know you <laughs> yeah. cannot. <laughs> yeah. You cannot not do a double dog dare. Yeah. Well. No, no. That so guy's a you, rule. I wanted to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wanted to tell you, Ted Lasso. I this is the theme for our fall kickoff address. And, you know, he has all kinds of um, little sayings in his... He has and, the best sayings. And believe is one of them. So that yes, was the focus with the of, sign that... Yeah. yeah. So that was the focus of our fall address. And that you can actually go and watch that online. I will do that. Yeah, yeah. Because we'll you know how... Link. That would be great. Yeah. So it was really good. I think people enjoyed it and they could relate to it. And the whole message was believe in yourself. I believe in you. I believe in the university. I think that is fabulous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that's fabulous. All right, so. You're up to question number two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, are we, we, oh we, okay. Are we, okay, but are you going to, like, I'm going to have someone tell me if you, because you can't not do a double dog dare. Okay. <laughs> all right. These folks here in the, in the studio can keep me true to, okay. to, to my word. Okay, so um, uh, we'll have to figure out how to do that. You know, there's you all kinds of rules about being woo, you know. Why? What are the rules? Well, you know, it's like Mickey me. Mouse at Disney World. Yeah, yeah but you can't do something. I mean, like, like you could be up in your you in your seats wherever you sit. I'm not I'm not going to presume you sit in a box. So I'm just yeah. going to say you're out. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, amongst the, the fans. The yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and you could like disappear at halftime. You could go put the costume on. You could run out onto the center court. You could do a little thing. Yeah. Okay. Maybe to the Ted Lasso theme song. Yeah. Then you scoot back and you're back in it before anybody even knows it. Yeah. Okay. Well, well you might help. good ideas. <laughs> yeah. I have lots of great ideas. Was it not a great idea when <laughs> yeah. I said you'd be a great university president? Do we want me to go that far? Well, yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wanted okay, to, right. let's just, just get back to the, you want um, to back you're to the me? focus. Am I? It's not working out for <laughs> yeah. well you, is it? Um, uh, so you're very accomplished and, you know, I went that to could your also mean old. Just uh, uh, no, well, I went yeah. to your uh, Dr. King, Elizabeth King, who's president and CEO of the foundation. We went to your office and 
um, oh, Washington. Oh, in, in Washington, D.C. Yeah. That was a great, yeah, that was yeah. a great visit. You all came in and saw You have the, great, the greatest office. I know I don't have that office anymore. I know, but you, have, but, but you have probably those same kind of I, artifacts I in do. your home office or yeah, wherever I do. your office. Yeah, I have some yeah. beautiful things. But you've also been a, a writer, and um, you wrote in Forbes uh, an article titled, It's Time for Women to Make Space Exploration History. Yeah. Tell us what you mean by that, or what you meant by that. Well, what's, you know, I'm a space baby, so I grew up on the space mm -hmm. coast. You know, I grew up watching the Apollo launches in person, mm -hmm. and um, very ironic, as we we're building Space Launch System, which is the world's largest rocket to power the Artemis mission, which is Artemis, a NASA named Artemis as the twin sister of Apollo, mm -hmm. so the Artemis mission that launched last year, um, we built that rocket in the same factory my mom and dad met at and built the Saturn V. Mm. And so for me, it's very serendipitous, yeah. you know, because, you know, it's kind of like one door opens another, right, but, yeah. you know, you, it's kind of just really um, very touching. And as I look around in the 1970s, you know, there was 8% of women in STEM per studies. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'd probably be off a percentage or two, you know, but approximately, certainly less than 10% of women in science, technology, engineering, and math disciplines. And today, um, in 2023, I was just reading a report uh, this week, it's sitting at globally 28%. Mm -hmm. So a significant improvement, yeah. really. But still not. Nowhere where we need to be. Mm -hmm. And as you know, and I, um, it's, you know, unless you, you know, we can't celebrate that there's two women for every out of 10 and say we've accomplished it. Mm -hmm. We've got to get to the tipping point to eliminate being the only. Yeah. There is incredible talent out there. And if we want to be the world's strongest nation, if we want to have the world's best companies, why would you opt yourself down to only selecting from a portion of the population mm -hmm. for your talent? Mm -hmm. And what's even more interesting is we talk about recruiting and retention and we talk about all these things as folks are in, you know, in college and in their early career lives, but this starts actually in elementary school. Mm -hmm. So here's an interesting statistic. By third grade, most boys believe they're strong in math. Mm -hmm. They just accept that they're strong in yeah. math. Part of it is, you know, the environment, the conditioning, uh, how they're spoken to, what people's expectations are of them. Yeah. They're more uh, involved in analytical, linear exactly. kind of activities exactly. by and I either have the second grade or third grade wrong because the other one is by the third grade I'm sorry so by the second grade boys think that they have mm -hmm. they're really good at math mm -hmm. by the third grade little girls don't believe they're very good at math mm. and so part of my quest in life is not only to work on the pipeline as people are coming through universities high schools universities into their careers, but it's having that conversation to the very people who are educating and the society which we're living in, that as early as the second grade, people are forming mm -hmm. these opinions of themselves in their mind. And I have a great example. When I was in ninth grade, um, I, so first off, when I was in third grade, my elementary school teacher told my parents that I uh, was disabled and that I need to be placed in a special learning program because I couldn't... A learning disability? A learning disability mm -hmm. because I could not do English. No. Oh. But I could do tons of math. Mm -hmm. And I could do math and science. And my mom and dad were like, well, she can do math and science. We'll help her with her phonic, you know, mm -hmm. phonetics and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. I'm still not very good at English. <laughs> You'll see, I find I make up tons of words. I think they're all perfectly right, yeah. but they're not. Um, and so by the time I got to ninth grade, I remember sitting in a classroom, and Miss Mary Cunningham was my high school teacher. She has since passed away. Um, and we had taken an algebra test, and she wrote on a blackboard. That shows you, you know, you and I were the mm -hmm. same generation. Yeah, she chalk. wrote on a blackboard mm -hmm. with chalk mm -hmm. the couple of people who got 100s. And we hadn't been handed our test back yet, so nobody knew. And she wrote my name on the blackboard. Mm -hmm. And I looked at that, and in that moment, Rick, I was like, Maybe I can do this. Mm -hmm. And so you go from an elementary school teacher who thought I had a learning disability because I wasn't strong in traditional girl things, English and, mm -hmm. you know, all that, but mm -hmm. I was strong in the mathematics and mm -hmm. the science, to a teacher who was really good at helping reinforce it, to becoming president of math club, which, by the way, 
that is my pet. I was president of math club, so that should say a lot about me. You, as an is individual. that one of your things you had hanging on the wall? No, I didn't. That'd be no, great, wouldn't it? But I was president of math club. Yeah. Like, who's president of math club, yeah. right? Not very many people. Not very many people, <laughs> and especially not in the 1980s. So, um, again, it is about starting early. So that article is about we can never be satisfied. Mm. We have to continue to mm -hmm. push. And and we have – there's so many studies out there. Anyone who wants to argue that diversity doesn't work, they're just – you know, they're just – they're not speaking truth. Mm -hmm. But it's more than diversity, as you know. It's inclusion. Mm -hmm. And if you – people don't think that their voices are going to be listened to, if they don't think what they say matters – then you can have all the diversity in the world, but you're still right, not going right. to get there. So it's not it's not inclusive of just the people on the mm -hmm. org chart. It is having an environment and a culture where people are drawn into the conversation and part of the solutions. That's just a great message. So are you going to today at the at your session this afternoon? Are you going to talk about that? I am. Too? I actually am, and I have some examples that I'll even share. Um, I remember going into one of my leadership roles and going um, into a workplace conference room and all the women sat in the back of the room along the sides mm -hmm. and I said why are you all sitting in the mm -hmm. back because there's like seats empty at the table right, yeah. we're not allowed to mm -hmm. now I don't believe for a minute anybody told them mm -hmm. they're not allowed to what I do believe that there was an environment that yeah. and encouraged them to constructed to exactly yeah. and so I said you all everybody sits at the table mm -hmm. even if we have to crouch or crowd ourselves in well you know I that that's the really nice thing about you. So when I was, when, I'm going to go back to when Elizabeth and I were going to visit you in, at your office in, in Washington State at Boeing. And just for a visual, she had this really nice view. And then every so often, uh, this little helicopter flew by. <laughs> but there was a cow in the corner. Yeah. There was a cow in the corner yeah. with a Rosie the Riveter. And flag. you immediately put me at ease. I, mean, I think Elizabeth um, had met you before. But... Um, and that's that's the great thing, and, and I think that that's important as a leader too. Totally. To, to you know, coming in and saying you know all these titles and doctor this. None of and, that matters. Yeah, it doesn't. None it doesn't. of it matters. Yeah. Um, early in my career, I would walk downstairs at seven o'clock every morning, down two flights of stairs, to go get a soda pop. Mm -hmm. Because they had styrofoam cups, which, by the way, I know are very en vogue now, but I'm not going to lie. I love styrofoam. <laughs> yeah, they and keep they the have, ice cold. They keep cold. it cold, right? Especially when you live in Texas. Yeah, you need and, that. And, they have, and we had crushed <laughs> ice, and I'd get my soda pop. So every morning I would walk down the stairs, and I would say hello to the only executive we had on the campus. And every morning he would, like, ignore me and grunt. I mean, like, it was like, hey, you know, Rick. Yeah. And you'd go, <clears throat> and just keep walking. And this went on for months, right? So mm. one day I didn't say hi. I was like, whatever, mm -hmm. like this isn't working, you know, mm -hmm. and the guy probably thinks, why am I going down every morning at the same time anyways, for, mm -hmm. you know, like why aren't I in my cubicle working or something? <laughs> yeah. And um, I got summoned to his office later that day. He was worried I didn't feel good. He's <laughs> like, you didn't say hi to me this morning. And I looked at him and I thought to myself, you can make this grand gesture. His office had to call me. They had to schedule a meeting. Mm -hmm. I had to walk over there. It wasn't a long walk, but I, mm -hmm. you know, I'm all freaked out because like, I've got to go see this guy, you know, like I'm a yeah. newbie. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was all because I didn't say hi to him that mm -hmm. morning. And I was and, like, and you had to, but he didn't have to. Right. And so I philosophically believe to your point, you have to make people feel welcome mm -hmm. so i hug yeah. everybody yeah i do well, uh, well we can and we know that about because you. we yeah, yeah i know uh, this whole important. interview <laughs> can, can everybody tell <laughs> so um okay i want to go okay. back to artemis <gasps> so excited so and, and I, I don't know if this is delayed yet or it but is it is the launch going to happen this? so artemis no it's scheduled for no earlier than November of 2024. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the uncrewed test flight occurred last year. Mm -hmm. And then this will be the crewed flight test where uh, she will circle the moon. Mm -hmm. And this will be the first launch with a female and a person of color. And How many people will be on it? There will be four people on mm -hmm. it. The total length of time is 10 days. Mm -hmm. I think it's about four Five day, four days to get there. And they're going to go into lunar uh, orbit, no. not, then, not, not going to land. They're not landing and, you know, slingshot back. Mm -hmm. But this is another test flight. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's one of the things that's very unique about this program is that the hardware that is being used by NASA um, to 
do all of the launch to do all this. You know, this is, you know, they don't have a whole separate set of flight test hardware that they're practicing on, and mm-hmm. then they'll go to the production hardware. I mean, they're using real hardware. So this program is just really inspiring. And it's inspiring for an entire generation of folks to see that the moon's within reach, but then so is Mars. And I am a believer, because I grew up with the Jetsons, mm-hmm. that you and I, before we die, we will travel on spaceways. There will be spaceways, not just highways, but there'll be spaceways, and we will totally be doing that. Just like uh, for a little, just a test, or no, to get to one place, yeah, for us to get for. So, like, you need to get out to the East Coast for a meeting. Mm -hmm. You'll get on a little spaceway and you'll fly out there. And be there in about thirty minutes, or well, maybe you know, maybe (laughs) twenty. Wouldn't that be awesome? (laughs) That would be. I mean, because I'm not sure about you know, I'm not convinced we're going to have teleporting before you and I die. Not to mention, I don't want them to like re put me back together wrong, yeah, right, you know, yeah. but I am no absolutely convinced we'll be on spaceways before we die. You know, um, you m- remind me of my interest in space too. And I grew up in Houston and, oh, see? and, and, and I lived um, uh, for a big chunk of the time down there by NASA. Um, yeah, that's Johnson by Johnson Space, space Center. Yeah. And in those days, um, uh, you could actually just walk into the the building and and go look at the and in, into the, in, the, control the control room. room. And, and, and now you can't do that unless no, you get a, all kinds of clearance or whatever. Right. But um, yeah, and and then when you, you would drive by NASA and you knew that there was an active mission that they were um, controlling because um, they had a light shining up into the space and in in, in the astronauts all trained there. They so all trained. We they, saw them in the grocery do, stores. Yeah, there, it's just. Yeah. Part of the anybody who hasn't been down to Johnson because you know they have a fabulous museum. Mm-hmm. They have both outside displays and inside yeah, displays. It's awesome. It is awesome. Mm-hmm. I was at a um, Derby High School a couple of years ago. It was a few years back. It was pre-COVID. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was post-COVID. I get confused. You know, it's kind of <laughs> yeah. like that whole time yeah. period yeah, kind of blur. messes yeah. with me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I met this young lady who wants to be an astronaut. And one of my good friends in this world is a gentleman by the name of Chris Ferguson, who commanded the last space shuttle oh, wow. flight. So he land, you know, he yeah. was the last one to land her mm. at Kennedy and hit the mark. Mm. And he is absolutely fabulous. Mm-hmm. So we called him up mm-hmm. so she could meet an astronaut, and we FaceTimed him for her. And he's just an absolute doll. I mean, mm-hmm. he's a treasure, right? But she's still studying to be an astronaut. Wow. And so those are the moments yeah. where we can do little things mm-hmm. that will have outsized impacts mm-hmm. on people that we may never touch again, yeah. Yeah. but we'll never That's forget. Awesome. Yeah, and I actually had when I was a little boy, you know, because uh, the Apollo launches in the late 60s. Yes. Um, and so I had a little lunch pail with the... Uh, Holy... That totally, wasn't around. that yeah. cool? Yeah. It was yeah. totally cool. Yeah. Like, if you could be an astronaut, would... So let me ask you this. If you got an opportunity to go to space... Would you do it? I'd do it. Yeah. I totally would do it. Yeah. Now, I want to come back. Exactly. Like, I don't want to go to Mars because that's too long of a yeah. trip. Well, but if there is an. Months. Yeah, that's... yeah. But, you know, there are companies who are talking about they'll have, you know, like instead of Airbnbs, there'll be like a space B&B where you'll go up there and they're actually developing. It's like a tent. It's like a pop up trailer in space. One day you'll be able to go up there and like spend the night mm-hmm. in lunar orbit. Yeah. Like, wouldn't you totally do that? Yeah. Now, the whole purpose of Artemis is to get. Some a settlement and scientific labs yes. there on the moon, so it'll make it easier to go to Mars. Right, right? because yeah. getting to the moon and then at some point, you know, this is obviously their objective, and it's mm-hmm. due to you know the government has to decide, mm-hmm. U.S. government has to decide what they want to do. But it is it's giving it is getting um, all of the infrastructure needed mm-hmm. so that you can make that longer journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because you know, because that is a long journey. Yeah, and you know, sometimes. You know, Rick and I get up and run every morning at four o'clock, so the stars are you know really bright. And um, there's an it, app that you can track the space station. Is it? Yeah, I, I know that. And so, um, but when you're looking at Mars, you know, sometimes you can. It's pretty clear. You can see it um, uh, even with your naked eye. You know, the the color. Yes. Uh, that's a long way. And just to think, ways. just to think about being up there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that, I'm that glad there's a, people that, that will do I'm glad it. there are people who, they are the expeditionaries. Yeah. You know, they're the folks that back in the 1500s the were going across the seas yeah. and mm-hmm. discovering countries and mm-hmm. nations. And yeah. I'm, I, I'm pretty convinced. I mean, even, you know, like we lived in Philadelphia for, uh, in Philly for a long time. And thinking about people living Philly as one of the early settlements mm-hmm. and going west. 
I'm not sure how far I would have made it. I'm not sure I would have even made it to, you know, a couple of states yeah. over. Covered wagons were not real comfortable. No, no, no. Well, and, you know, and, you had, and women had to wear them giant dresses with yeah. all that stuff. I'm just not sure it would have happened. Yeah. No, you weren't. You, you wouldn't be used to air conditioning, and well, know. that's true. And Steve always says that he's always like, you know, you 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 survive in what you know, and right, so if you yeah. didn't know it, but I'm still not sure. <laughs> I'm just not sure. Well, I bet that you would have survived that covered wagon. You you survived a lot, and I, look, you look how far you've gone. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure I would survive the covered wagon. All right. I also want to ask you. I can't believe you're retired. I'm not really retired. Well, okay. So, how are you we... offering me a job today? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm in. <laughs> um, He's not offering me yeah, a job. I know. Yeah, so I, I know what that's like. Uh, um, when people retire, they actually don't know how they actually worked before because they're doing so many other things that they did. Um, doing, it's been a you know? hard transition, mm. though. I have had the same, I have worked for the same company in the same industry for nearly 35 years. Mm-hmm. And I still support Boeing through, uh, you know, I consult yeah. for them. Um, um, and so it's been a transformation because, you know, I, you know, I was in the office at 6 in the morning. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd be on the phone at 7 or 8 o'clock at night. You know, I was flying around the mm-hmm. world all the time. And so just kind of separating and realizing that there actually is life outside of mm-hmm. one corporate structure or corporate yeah. entity, that's been, trans- that's, been, that was, that's been an adjustment for certain. So what have you been doing? Um, I have been really, you know, I said to somebody, I grew up professionally sitting, uh, beside airmen and, um, wheat fields. And I was blessed to be asked to serve on the deer and company board mm. of directors. So I chair their audit committee and I'm on their board. I'm on the RTX board, which is formerly Raytheon technologies. Mm-hmm. So that has Pratt and Whitney it has, uh, Raytheon it has Collins aerospace, um, I'm helping you all. I'm doing some mm-hmm. stuff with K-State yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. I'm spending a little time down at Embry-Riddle because, you know, I love Embry-Riddle. Mm-hmm. Um, I then also am doing work with Blackstone, uh, okay. you know, so some helping out them with some companies as an advisor. I'm doing most, mostly advising work. Mm-hmm. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do next. I'm mm-hmm. open to an operating role if the right one were to come along. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm taking this – I'm eight months out, and I'm taking this time to really – just really remember what – what matters to me, because you know the great thing is, I get to choose who I work with, and I get to choose what I do, and that's a luxury you don't always get in and your when. career. Yeah. And when yeah. I do like walking in the morning, yeah. I wasn't able to do that in my mm-hmm. you know my last job. I'd walk whenever mm-hmm. I could, but every morning I go for yeah. a walk. Yeah, well, that's awesome. So, um, do you have any words of advice um, for me before we close? Well. I am a huge fan of yours, and I really I didn't ask I, you to get that. No, no, I know, okay. no, no, I know, because you would never have asked me that. And I remember when you and I first met, and we had the best time. Because mm-hmm. you know, I'm really good at find, I'm really good at identifying folks who are really good, and that's you. No, and uh, you and uh, Rick and what you all are doing as a family here mm-hmm. on the campus, and all of the great um, efforts. You all are breaking the glass ceiling from a university perspective in terms of how you're transforming Wichita State. Mm-hmm. Wichita State is not a local college anymore. Wichita mm-hmm. State's on a global scale because of what you've done with NIAR, mm-hmm. um, what you've done with partnerships with um, corporations, mm-hmm. what you've done from an educational system. And, um, you know, and you've done it, like Ted Lasso, by being you. So my best advice to you, is to keep being you. Well, that's that's very kind of you, and that's I don't know how to be any anything else. But, and that's but, the most <laughs> fabulous thing in the world, right? <laughs> yeah, and so this whole thing, this wasn't planned. This is no, I just kind of went with the flow. I just yeah, because yeah, I saw the pictures. Well, it's good to, it's see, you, to see you, and again. we'll see you around campus. We'll in see the you around campus. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. My program ends this year, so like this is like my yeah yeah. yeah. yeah you're the the in, the, in, in residence. I for today. Yeah, I think it ends today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah cool. Yeah. Good to see you. It's good to see you. Bye. Bye. Thank you all for listening. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to the Forward Together podcast. On the next edition of Forward Together podcast, I will talk with Dr. Bobby Berry, Assistant Dean for Diversity and Outreach for Wichita State's College of Applied Studies. Bobby also serves as the chairperson for the First Generation Coordinating Council, and his research interests include how to help first generation and underserved students succeed in higher education. Go Shockers! Don't forget to vote for your favorite Rick photo. The link is in the description.